Hello everybody, welcome to The Conscious Collaboration. My name is Jared Allen. Today we're gonna to do a video, a video that I've been looking forward to putting together for quite some time now. Uh, we're gonna cover the top 10 questions people ask about ayahuasca. Now I'm gonna do my very best to answer these questions. Obviously it's uh, from my own perception. If you do have any other questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Now, just to give you a little bit of a background, I started my work with ayahuasca in 2018. I've been fortunate enough to participate in ceremonies in Australia, uh, in Ecuador, in Colombia, and also Mexico. I can sort of break my ayahuasca work into two parts. Um, there's the part where I have been participating in ceremony, so I've been the one lying on the mattress, going through the whole process myself, doing my own inner work. And I've also done a lot of work uh, in the role as a facilitator. So when I talk about that, uh, I talk about working alongside a shaman, under the shaman's guidance, obviously, um, helping people through their process during the ceremony, um, you know, guiding them to the best of my ability. Also the role of facilitator a lot of the time has been in a retreat setting so where people are coming for you know a week sometimes up to two weeks and doing a block of ceremonies so I've assisted a lot and led a lot in that role of helping people prepare, uh, helping people also gain an understanding of the work as they move into it, also helping people with integration so after their ceremonies within the retreat setting and also outside that as well. So ever since I started my work with Ayahuasca in 2018 it's definitely become a huge passion of mine. I devote majority of my life to it now as well. So the reason why I explain this is because it has given me the ability and I'm fortunate enough to have been exposed to a lot of people coming through this process. So through this process uh, obviously there's some questions that pop up and these are the top 10 questions that seem to uh, be brought forward to me a lot of the time so I'm going to do my best to answer them. Hope you enjoy. Okay, at number 10, is ayahuasca a drug? Now this is a bit of a challenging question because I guess we really have to try and understand what the perception of the word drug is. So I'm assuming in this context we're talking about a drug being something that you can become addicted to, a drug being something that can be misused, or a drug that being something that people uh, are using to escape reality or abuse. So in this case, absolutely ayahuasca is not a drug. Now, where this becomes a little bit challenging as well is that obviously there was this whole thing um, with psychedelics in the 70s. So ayahuasca is a psychedelic, even though it has been practiced and used for thousands of years, uh, it does get lumped into that category of psychedelics. So obviously there was this whole war on drugs, uh, I think starting around the 70s at some point, where the Nixon administration decided that basically anything they decided was a drug got lumped into a category, a category and uh, basically it was outlawed and deemed illegal, it was horrible. Now within that, obviously there were some drugs that were absolutely horrible and people were addicted to. But psychedelics, obviously I believe anyway, got wrongly lumped into that category. So therefore, what we're seeing now is because ayahuasca is a psychedelic, even though it's been practiced for thousands of years, lumped into that category as uh, a drug because the psychedelics are labeled as a drug and therefore there, it can bring some confusion around it. Now. The thing we have to look at here as well, so let's say for instance that you know it's been labelled a drug for around that period of I don't know, just over 50 years, ayahuasca has been practised as a medicine within a ceremonial setting for thousands of years. So it's definitely reported as long ago as 2000 years, there is evidence of it being used as a sacrament for up to three, three and a half thousand years as well. So the last thing to remember with this as well is that the ayahuasca itself is one part of the ceremonial experience. So you have the ayahuasca, which is very, very important, the brew itself, the thing that you drink, but what also makes the whole experience super powerful is number two, the ceremony, but number three, and absolutely most importantly, it is led by a shaman. So a shaman is someone who, if you don't know, is gonna lead the ceremony. And these shamans generally have 
hundreds of years of experience passed down to them and a lot of these shamans also have spent their whole life practicing this tradition and practicing to work within these ceremonies. So to answer number 10, is ayahuasca a drug? In my opinion, absolutely no. Okay, at number nine, is ayahuasca safe? Now this is a question that I wanna make sure that I answer to the best of my ability. It's also very important at this stage that we do understand that just like anything in life, there is an element of risk. So I'm not saying absolutely 150% yes it is safe, but one thing I do think we can do when it comes to our work with ayahuasca is try and mitigate the risks. So if we can mitigate the risks, then it is obviously going to be more likely to be a safe experience for you. So when I talk about mit mitigating the risks, what I'm talking about, if we can check off, say for instance, four things. If we can make sure that we are participating in a ceremony with a genuine trained shaman who knows what they're doing, preferably from lineage, someone who spent a lot of time um, practicing the art of being able to serve this beautiful, powerful medicine. If you are ticking that off as a yes, that you have a very well-trained shaman, then yes, it can be very, very safe. Now, at number two, if we are um, also making sure that the medicine that we are taking is coming from the source. So usually, if we've ticked off number one, we're coming, we have a genuine shaman, they're gonna bring their own medicine. So they're gonna bring their own medicine that they have brewed. It's usually done in a ceremony. Majority of the time it's even been grown themselves as well. So if the medicine is safe and it's been brewed from a genuine shaman who knows exactly what they're doing within um, their community or it's been brewed within um, their local community, then it's gonna be very safe as well. Now, number three in regards to that, if we're ticking off this to mitigate the risks, if our facilitator or our organizer is very um, container focused, so what I'm talking about there is they're making sure that the container is safe, they're making sure that there is enough people there to care for all the people in the ceremony, they're watching over you throughout the whole experience. They're not just leaving you be, letting you wander off, for instance. If you have a very like safety-focused facilitator or organizer, then yes, it is very safe because that takes one of the risks out of it as well. And the fourth thing that's gonna help you mitigate the risk and also make your ayahuasca experience safe is it comes down to you, the participant. If you have been very, very honest with your facilitator, with your shaman in regards to any uh, previous health conditions, underlying health conditions, uh, any medication you are on or have been on, then it is very safe. So they can sort of cross-reference those things, give you guidance if it's uh, suitable to be able to participate in the ceremony or not. But if you've been very forward with that and really told them everything uh, that they need to know in regards to questions or whatever it might be, then it is very safe. So I do believe if we do tick those things off, an ayahuasca ceremony and ayahuasca is very safe. Um, so yes, as a question, is it safe? In my opinion, yes, as long as those things are uh, ticked off and those things are checked. Okay, at number eight, how many ayahuasca ceremonies should I do? So. In my opinion and from my experience, it all depends on how deep you want to go with the work. From my experience, I do think there's a sweet spot between three and four. So if you can, if you want to do deep in a ceremonial work, if you can do sort of three to four ceremonies in conjunction with each other, for instance, in a retreat setting over seven, 10 days, something like that, you are very, very likely to connect with the medicine and also have a very deep process. So a deep holistic process. Um, but this is all really depending on what you feel called towards and what's available to you as well. If you have the ability to um, do a ceremony with a, a great shaman that someone's referred you to and it's just one ceremony and that's what you feel called to, it's not to say that you're not gonna get something out of this experience. Generally, the only reason I mention this about the three to four ceremonies is sometimes it does take a couple of ceremonies for us to be able to connect with the medicine. Sometimes it takes a couple of ceremonies for us to purge out and clear out some of the things that need to happen um, in our process as well. Um, so generally, when I talk about the three to four, that's the reason being the likelihood of you having a very complete process is a lot higher. Now, I also have to mention here, you know, I devote a lot of what I do towards plant medicine, ayahuasca, you know, helping people gain an understanding. The first ceremonies that I ever did were just two. They were a Friday night and a Saturday night. And if I was to go back and sort of look at 
a very important turning point in my life, it was definitely those two ceremonies. So there is no definitive number that you need, but hopefully that gave you a little bit of an understanding. Okay, at number seven of the top 10 questions people ask about ayahuasca, I am religious, will this change? Now something to remember here is that ayahuasca is not an organized religion. The practices of ayahuasca as a sacrament generally isn't an organized religion. So obviously there is a ceremonial aspect, but what we have to understand there, a lot of the ceremonial aspect is to help guide you through the experience as well. There's no scripture, there is no preaching or anything like that. There are a couple of ayahuasca churches, that's a totally different thing, but as a whole there's no scripture, there's no sort of preaching or anything that you have to follow or believe in. One of the things that I find super, super interesting and I love about ayahuasca is at the end of the day, it is you and the medicine. And I found this absolutely fascinating. I'd always sort of struggled with the organized religion thing personally, um, but the fact that it's just you and the med medicine and also the realizations that you have is just between you and the medicine, which is super, super interesting to me. And also super, super powerful. So, um, Generally what I see in regards to people who do follow a religion, I've had people come through ceremonies, Catholics, uh, Christians, uh, people who follow the Muslim faith, uh, Jewish people, even sheikhs. And generally what I see from people who do practice a religion, it actually fortifies um, their belief and fortifies their relationship with their God and with their religion. So in regards to the question, I'm religious, will this change? From what I've seen, no. Okay, at number six, do I need to be spiritual to do ayahuasca? Now I think with this question, we really need to define this whole spiritual thing. Um, obviously, spirituality has gained a lot of popularity, but I also think there's a little bit of confusion about this whole spirituality thing, in my opinion, from my perception. For me, being spiritual is not saying a whole heap of words or a whole heap of buzzwords. Being spiritual isn't wearing linen clothes or wearing necklaces or fedoras or burning smokes all the time and different cleansing things or sprays or whatever it might be. That is not being spiritual. That is, in my opinion, a bit of dogma. I mean, those things can be important and if people enjoy doing them, that is amazing. I personally do some of those things as well. That is not an issue whatsoever. I spray spray sprays, I've got these things here, but that doesn't define being spiritual, I don't think, and I think we really need to draw the line there. I think the human experience is a spiritual experience. I think every human on this earth is spiritual, you know, and we're all just finding our own way, we're all just finding our own connection, we're all just uh, sometimes remembering or unlearning, whatever it might be. So I think the human experience is a spiritual experience. So to answer that question, do I need to be spiritual to do ayahuasca? I do believe that every human and everything on this earth is spiritual. So yeah, I hope that answers that question. Okay, we're halfway through now. Uh, at number five in the top 10 questions people ask about ayahuasca, what does it taste like? It's kind of a hard question to answer, to be honest with you. For me, if I was to put it into a taste-ish, a little bit, it kind of tastes a little bit like aniseed, um, but that probably doesn't even do it justice. Sometimes the taste changes as well. It can be really quite earthy. It all depends on the brew as well and depends on the tradition that you're drinking in. Sometimes it's quite liquid. Sometimes it is quite dense. Um, for instance, in the Colombian tradition of Yahe. Um, but yeah, it's really hard to explain exactly what it tastes like. One thing I can assure you though, like it, it is challenging to begin with. The first time you drink it, it's usually not too bad. Sometimes the second time you drink it, it isn't too bad. But what happens is over time it does, and nearly majority of people who work with ayahuasca report this, it does taste worse every time and it can be more challenging. Eventually I got to the point, because I was working with ayahuasca and drinking a little bit in the ceremony, sometimes um, in a support role, is that you eventually have to learn how to accept it and just sort of allow um, that part of the process to be there. And also there's a lot to learn through that part of the process. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of idea, but 
The most important thing is I think you have to go out there and taste it yourself because it's really, really hard to explain. Okay, at number four, do I need a shaman to drink ayahuasca? From my perspective, it's an absolute yes. You do need a shaman to drink ayahuasca. I don't think it is something you should ever do on your own. There's a few reasons for this. Obviously, there's a safety aspect in regards to it. Um, you know, you're purging, you're throwing up. It can be kind of dangerous if you like threw up on your back or something on those lines from a physical aspect. Sometimes you might get really scared from a physical aspect and you need someone to support you and help you and make sure you don't injure yourself or hurt yourself. But also we've got the spiritual aspect of it as well. So in my opinion, you know, working with ayahuasca is like having spiritual spiritual surgery, you want to make sure you have a spiritual surgeon there with you to being able to help you and guide you through the experience. There is so much knowledge, so much training that goes in to shamans being able to deliver these ayahuasca ceremonies. So to drink it on your own could be very, very dangerous and you're really leaving yourself open to a lot of risks in many different factors of the work with ayahuasca. Now that's not to mention the last thing that I, I spoke about previously in, in one of the other parts, I think it was in number one. Um, you know, ayahuasca is just one part of it. The actual drinking of the ayahuasca is just one part of it. What also makes up the ayahuasca experience is the ceremony and also the shaman or the medicine person guiding you through the experience. So to answer the question, do I need a shaman? From my opinion, from my perspective, absolutely yes. Okay, at number three in the top 10 questions people ask about ayahuasca, how long will it last? So there's a few variables in regards to this. Um, most ayahuasca ceremonies last anywhere between five and 12 hours. Now, if we're talking about the, if we were to talk about the actual experience itself, it all depends on how many cups you have. But let's just talk about if you had one cup, for instance. Generally, if you had one cup, it could last anywhere between sort of three hours to sort of eight hours. But during a lot of ceremonies, some people will have multiple cups. But generally, you want to allow uh, the, within your mind that the ceremony could go up to sort of 10 hours, 12 hours. But generally, if I was to give you a bit of an idea, most ceremonies go between six and eight hours. Now, if you are in a good, safe container, there is always going to be people there to look after you well into the night until you're completely out of your experience. So how long will it last? It all depends on how many cups you have, but to give you a bit of a rule of thumb, it's gonna last, the ceremony is gonna last anywhere between sort of four to 12 hours, depending on how many cups you have and the type of ceremony or tradition that it is. Okay, at number two, a question that uh, a lot of people ask when it comes to working with ayahuasca. I'm gonna approach this one as carefully as I possibly can. Will I go crazy? after my ayahuasca experience. From my experience in the ceremonies that I've been, I've never seen someone go crazy after their ayahuasca experience. Now, we touched on it sort of in, back at number nine, you know, uh, in regards to is ayahuasca safe? Now, if you are, I'm not gonna go back through those things, but you know, if you have a good shaman, you have a good facilitator, the medicine's good, and you've been very, very honest with any of your uh, previous mental or health conditions, any medication that you're on, for instance, you are very, very safe. So it's quite the opposite a lot of the time. Ayahuasca gives people a lot of clarity when it's done correctly. Now, the other thing to uh, take into accordance with this one as well is making sure that you prepare correctly also making sure that you're integrating your experiences correctly. Um, that's also gonna help with your mental stability through this period of time. But like I said, majority of everything that I've seen, people get a lot of clarity, they get a lot of healing, they get a lot of growth from their work with ayahuasca. There are periods absolutely when you're in the middle of a ceremony and it's super intense. I've thought to myself a million times, you've gone crazy, Jared, you've gone too far, but after this and after the ceremony and I've gone through the process and I've released and I've purged and done what I needed to do in the ceremony, I've gained huge amounts of clarity. So I'm gonna leave this one up to the viewers, uh, but I'm sure you can read between the lines of what I'm trying to say here, but it is very, very safe if it's done correctly. Okay, at number one of the top 10 questions people ask about ayahuasca, this seems to be a question that everyone asks, will I throw up or will I 
poop my pants or shit my pants? <laughs> Seems to be a question that everyone asks when it does come to working with ayahuasca. Look, when it comes to the throwing up and also the bottom purge inside of it, it's pretty inevitable. Um, it is a part of the process. You can actually see one of our videos on the purging process where we talk about that in a little bit more depth. Uh, you should be able to see that below. Um, but when it comes to throwing up, absolutely. Um, it is very, 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 very likely that you are gonna throw up uh, during your ayahuasca experience. It's encouraged, it's an important part of it. In regards to, am I gonna ship my pants? Look, I've seen it, it's happened, it hasn't happened to me. Um, it does happen that maybe sometimes you can't get to the bathroom in time, but it's just one of those things that happen during a ceremony. If you are really worried about it, you can always just get like an adult diaper or something like that for your first ceremony or two to give you peace of mind. Funnily enough though, in the ceremonial setting, the throwing up, the pooping and all that sort of thing, you find in the word circles afterwards, it's just a common conversation. It's something that seems to be accepted with uh, the work with ayahuasca. So just in conclusion, I hope you have loved the top 10 questions that people ask about ayahuasca. Um, like I said, this is just from my experience and what I've seen, I don't, uh, you know, profess to be the know-all of any of this, but I have had a little bit of experience. If you do have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. Also, if you could please like and subscribe this video, it is super helpful to us. We're trying our very best to get lots of great information out there. But most of all, thank you for collaborating with us. Thank you for watching. Um, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks so much.